So Simon, I got this high five segment I want us to do. Because I, I sit back and I watch leadership in all walks of life, in all segments of society. And I see some people that are just blowing me away by how well they're leading in very challenging times. And I want to ask you to tell the audience what you think maybe the top five hardest leadership roles are in any walk of life. I've got five uh, little roles here that I think are probably the most challenging things that a leader will ever do. Um, and I'll, in fact, I'll kick it off and we'll just bounce back and forth. Does that sound okay? Yeah, that would be fantastic. Let's do this. Um, for me, number five on this list is the local level elected official. And the reason I say local is because when you start to get to the mid-level or the national level, it's a lot harder for your constituents to see you, to talk to you, to complain to you. But when you're that local level elected official, they're in the grocery store next to you. They're at the restaurant. They see you at church. And they like to tell you every time you did something wrong. Occasionally, they may pat you on the back for doing something right. But they're going to tell you every time you did something wrong. And it occurs to me, it's really, really hard to stick to your guns when you know I'm going to hear this 10,000 times in the grocery store and at the gas station if I make this decision. But I still think it's the right decision to do. So for me, that's number five on my list. What would you say is a tough leadership assignment? Oh, well, I think uh, a tough leadership assignment would be the the assistant manager at a restaurant because oh, when someone's yeah. complaining, yeah, right. And it's when someone's complaining and someone is always complaining, you know, the employee's going to you. Well, what do I do? Do I comp this this meal? Do I do this? Do you, are they? You know, it, it's tough. It's you. You always want to make everyone happy, but at the same token, it's it's still a business. So where do you draw that line? Yeah. And it's nonstop. Yeah, that's so true because nobody comes up and tells you, hey, you did a great job. My food was perfect. They only tell you when something was like 1% wrong, they forgot about the 99% of right that you did today. Which kind of brings me to number four on my list because for me, number four on the list is that local sports coach. And by that, I mean, whatever sport is huge in your community, maybe it's hockey in Canada, in Ottawa, maybe it's high school football, where I'm from, that local coach, everybody has an opinion about how he or that coach is supposed to do their job. And not only does everybody have an opinion, but everybody complains and criticizes, even when you do well, like you won the big game, but they're not happy because you didn't go undefeated the whole season when in the big game. And it's like, there is no way that any human being could possibly please everybody in that role. So for me, that local coach is number four on my list. What about you? So coincidentally, number four for me was, was the quarterback on a team. Oh, look at that. And uh, <laughs> so it's meant to be, it's perfect. Uh, I'm a huge Canadian football league fan and it's nice and easy to follow. Nice. There's nine teams. It's great. I'm actually going to a game tonight. All right. Um, and, and my team, uh, the Winnipeg blue bombers, not my team specifically. I'm a I was going to say you team. own the Winnipeg uh, blue bombers. Yeah, I'm kind of a big deal in yeah, my head. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, they're back to back Grey Cup champions. So that's our version of the Super Bowl. Yeah. And uh, the quarterback, Zach Kolaros, he's bounced around a few different teams in the league. And he was basically written off because of a concussion that had happened a few years back. Went to another team, never actually played because he was recovering from the concussion. And then Winnipeg's quarterback got injured. So they brought Zach in and they brought him in with just a couple of games left in the season. Anyways, they end up winning the Grey Cup that year. And then COVID happened. They won wow. the Grey Cup last year, yeah. and they're undefeated. They're zero and three, or sorry, three and zero this year. So the guy has a record of twenty wins and two losses, and it is just as easy to find people critiquing this person Good gracious. Uh, yeah. for the two losses. Yeah. How about that? As as is for the fact that yeah. I, yeah, exactly. So it doesn't matter. Sorry, I didn't yeah. mean that. Ram no, I to no, I totally get it. It's it's crazy how sports fans are. Like, hey, you didn't win by enough. Yeah, you won, but it wasn't by enough. Or yeah, you won the big game, but you didn't go undefeated all season. It's like, man, come on. Um, yeah, it's it's crazy. All right, so number three on my list is the number two person in an organization. Now, I'm just going to give the listeners a hint. None of these on my list are inherently military roles. They're just any walk of life roles. And the 
two I see, the second in charge, the number two person in an organization, I think has probably the more difficult job than the number one person. Because the number one guy or gal, you know, they have the formal authority, they have the responsibility, but there's usually a level of buffer between them and everybody else in the organization. So yeah, you have to make some really hard decisions as the number one person. But the number two person not only has to live with those decisions, but usually everybody else in the organization goes to the number two and says, hey, I need you to tell the number one that they're a moron and we hate them, which makes the number two's <laughs> job so hard. What about you? So I mean, tell me your thoughts on a leader, a tough leadership gig here. Oh, yeah. So I, first of all, I've got to say, I completely agree. That second in command, the 2IC role is the toughest one. It, it's, it's coincidentally my number two, which works out very right. well. Um, and which, what a surprise, a couple of military yeah. guys had to find something uh -huh. in there. And, and the reason I put it as my number two, but then I'll get, which leads me to my number three, okay. uh, is that there is an expectation that the 2IC is supposed to be the expert in the role that they've right. got, but also able to fill into right. the IC yeah. role and and find and bridge that gap it's it's tough because you're still trying to just do your job but also know how to do the next yeah. level up it's yeah. challenging yeah and Painless. everybody in the world thinks you're the reason you're the one that needs to go fix the number one guy or the number one gal and that's not your job your job is to do the number two role and to do it with the best of your ability now of course protect the number one from making some really bad mistakes but um yeah it just Okay, so now tell us what would be number three on your list since I just stole number two from you. Oh, that's all good. I'm, I'm happy with that happened. Uh, so my number three is the friendly neighbor. Uh, I don't know about the area that you live in, but all of us, we all seem to get along really well. And the, fr yeah, the friendly neighbors and, we, you know, in the winter, we mm -hmm. help each other with, with clearing our driveways and those types of things. Ottawa gets quite a bit of snow. And there's, there's always the one friendly neighbor that's, that's, that's bending over backwards. I've seen it in the many different places I've lived. And what always seems to happen is that person, there's always one grumpy neighbor that's complaining about this person that's helping everyone out. And so this neighbor's helping, you know, keep the morale high in the area. We're all doing our different things. And then someone's complaining, calling the bylaw yeah. officer, whatever it is. And it's a tough, you just, you just want to be a nice person and respect each other and live your life. And yet there's always someone that has something to complain about. I'm laughing out loud that there is a neighbor who is such a jerk that they want to complain about the neighbor that is bending over backwards to help everybody else out. But yep, everybody has a neighbor like that. You know, we don't get that kind of snow in South Georgia, so we don't have friendly neighbors down here. Everybody can just be a jerk to everybody else because nobody has to help with snow. Um, well, I'll, I'll tell you. Ottawa set a record for the for the amount of snow last year. We had, we they stopped counting at three hundred and fifty oh centimeters, which is like, I'm like that's crazy. Yeah, it's like two and a half feet. Some yeah, crazy I was going to say like for that. those of you who it's don't nuts. recognize the the metric system, that's an insane amount of snow. Um, number yeah. two on my <laughs> list is going to be the stay at home parent, mom or dad, um, and the reason why is self evident. Your never off work. You never get a break from the moment that you actually, even when you're asleep, they wake you up and you're at work. And if, and of course you're taking care of your children and you love your children, but it's relentless, never a moment where you can take a break, which means if you ever lose your cool, if you ever let your guard down, if you ever, you know, just snap, it's because there's no one there to, you know, relieve stress or to give you a break. And that for me is probably the second hardest leadership role I can imagine out there. Um, what's number one on your list? Well, number one on my list is, uh, it, honestly, it's the emerging leader because okay. it, it, it comes across all different professions. And I know that's, it's kind of sound, might sound a little kind of trite because my, my podcast is meant to talk to emerging leaders, but that's not why I spoke to this. This point this is my number one. It speaks to all the people out there that are in, have some type of leadership role, be it formal or informal. We're all trying to figure it out. And then when you're having to make that leap into actually being in yeah. charge of folks and having to to step into that role, it is overwhelming yeah. it, as much as we've, and quite often, I think when people realize they're, uh, they're prepared, they're not quite as prepared for it as they, they might think they are. Yeah. Uh, I absolutely agree. You can tell people in uh, the future episodes of trench leadership that for me, that was a traumatic moment in my military career 
because I just didn't know how hard that was going to be until I got into it. And I, it was so hard that there was a moment where I thought maybe I made a mistake. Maybe I just need to go back to doing my own thing. Uh, eventually I learned to love it, but man, it was a really, really hard moment for me as a leader. Um, number well, one on my list for me, and this is, um, maybe people don't think about it in these terms, but I really hope you will. Number one on my list by far, by a long shot is learning how to lead yourself. The hardest person mm -hmm. that I have ever tried to lead by far is myself. Because I know myself, I know what I'm capable of, I know when I'm not delivering my best. When I let myself down, it is far more disappointing than the people that I lead when they let me down. By, for me, hands down, the hardest thing a leader will ever do is leading themselves. And if you can lead yourself well, even be willing to admit that I've made some mistakes or I don't know it all. If you can do that, then chances are you're ready to lead other people well. That's number one on my oh. list. 